high school quarterback. They said I couldn't get a D1 scholarship. You can't make it. You're not good enough. You're not skilled enough. They said I couldn't win a Heisman. They said I couldn't win a national championship. They said I wouldn't be a first round draft pick. They said I couldn't play in the league. Appreciate that. Would you like people to hear about your story? Well, I love to call it a God story because I think a God story is one that's impossible apart from the power of God and I think Timmy's story is definitely one of those. Well, it started, uh, it started. in the summer of 1986 when I was out in the uh, bottom of Mindanao. Mindanao is the large southern island in the Philippines and I was out preaching in the mountains. I was uh, weeping over the loss of millions of babies in America that were never given a chance. And I prayed and said, God, if you want another preacher in this world, you give me Timmy. And this was before he was conceived. And uh, I'll raise him to be a preacher. And so I went home and the next morning at breakfast shared with my family my, my prayer that I'd begun. And uh, everybody joined in and we started praying by name for, for God to give us Timmy. I was uh, considered high risk. I was 37. Um, we lived in an area that didn't have great medical care at the time and we had four healthy children and so people questioned us um, and yet we really believed that we needed to pray for Timmy and so I did conceive and we were very excited that I became pregnant with Timmy and we uh, went to see the doctor there in the town that we lived in. Uh, she said it wasn't a baby at all, he was a mass of fetal tissue and that I needed to abort him immediately if I were going to save my life. We didn't really have to make uh, a decision at that time. We had made it years previous because we were determined to trust the Lord with, with the children that he would give us. And if God called me to give up my life, um, then, then he would take care of my family. And so we just trusted. I continued to think that I would lose him almost on a on a daily basis um, because I had such a difficult pregnancy. I did spare Timmy. Time after time I thought that I had lost him and then only to discover I continued to be pregnant. So God was very gracious and he was delivered in a Manila hospital. The doctor delivered him. Bobby, you were right there. Um, there was a great big uh, clump of blood, blood that came out uh, where the uh, placenta wasn't properly attached basically for the whole nine months and completely and so uh, you know it was a miracle baby. He was healthy and we were just so grateful and we have reminded him countless times that God has a special plan for him. He spared him in the womb and he spared him since. Spared him laying on the field there at the University of Kentucky and um, he spared him for a reason. Of course, we tell that to our other children, too, because God has a plan for each of them. Sure. But I think that has marked Timmy's life. He is very aware of his beginnings and how God did spare him in the womb. I was prepared in all his life. I've talked to him about being a preacher. I've told him that sometime God will call him to preach. Right here! Hey, we will not be stopped! I will not be stopped right now! The guy is the most tremendous competitor I've ever seen in my life. It's shocking how competitive he is at 17 years old. Oh, I got turned and heard a pop. Pop? Yes, sir. Tough Just up. like my fibula on my other side. Is it broken? I don't know. The toughest guy I've ever met in my life. I'm convinced he's going to be a four-year starter for some college and, you know, the next Brett Favre in the NFL. Playing college football next year at the University of Florida. Let's go! We got 30 minutes! Let's go! For the rest of our lives! 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 For the he has a strong conviction for what he believes in as any person I've ever been around. And so I think that's why people listen.
talk about critics, and I don't think I've ever seen such polarization on a, on a player who's relatively new in the league. Does that ever enter your mind? For me, I honestly, I try to block it out. Obviously, you can't because it's, um, you know, it's kind of, it is everywhere. And then it's taking the fuel um, from all the negativity and using that as fuel in the fire to continue to work hard, to continue um, to never think I've arrived. You know, that drives me, and that's my focus more so than, than anything else that's going on out there. When you do something on the field, your linemen are there. They're flocking to you. He's talking to one of your teammates, Champ Bailey, and he said, John, I gotta tell you, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I play harder when this guy's on the field. I mean, that means a lot coming from a guy like Champ Bailey, you know, and I think if I come out, you know, every day in practice, every meeting, in every game, and I, you know, I love it, and I'm passionate about it, I'm enthusiastic, I know it's gonna be contagious. And there's only one thing that's more contagious, you know, than enthusiasm, and that's a bad attitude. When's the first time you heard about this T-Bowing, and what do you think of the whole phenomenon? Honestly, the first time I heard about it was yesterday. Right after we finished practice, Von Miller texted me and showed me what he did. Is he stole my jersey and took a picture for the Broncos <laughs> sign and tweeted it. And um, you know what really made my day was there was one kid. He said, "I'm T-Bowing while chemoing," and he had cancer and he was in the hospital. And so to be able to tweet him back and encourage him and see that, you know, that makes it all worth it. You know. Short motion is Eddie Royal. Tim play fakes in the pocket, sets. Throws pass caught to Marius Thomas out over the 45 midfield. Here we go 40, 35 foot race, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Denver is over. It's over. You know, I gotta thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I just want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And first and foremost, I just have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life.